Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, thanks for your patience as we got started. We're so excited to have uh, Brandon from Teleopti here to join us for the Map to Your Workforce Management Need webinar. A couple of quick reminders before we get started. This webinar is going to be recorded, and a copy of the recording and the slide deck will be sent out to all registrants after the webinar. Uh, also, we're going to go ahead and leave a couple minutes at the end of the presentation to answer any questions you have. So go ahead and feel free to type them into the question bar in your GoToMeeting uh, interface, and we'll save some time at the end to answer them for you. So let's go ahead and meet our presenters now. We have Brandon Rowe. Uh, he's the Director of Marketing at Teleopti. With nearly 15 years of marketing experience, he has deep expertise in marketing planning, sales enablement, content strategy, and go-to-market execution. During this period, he's worked with and led cross-functional teams across sales, product, management, and business development around the globe. And he is currently responsible for driving Teleopti's partner enablement and go-to-market strategy. Joining him is Edge House Interactive's VP of Marketing, Scott Logan. Scott has been in the technology software arena for more than 10 years, and the last five of which have been exclusively focused on contact center technology. So without any further ado, we'll go ahead and hand it over to Brandon and Scott to get started. Thanks, Jenna. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, depending on where you're located. Uh, uh, before we get started, I, I want to thank you again for taking the time out of your schedules to be with us today. I think we put together uh, a, a pretty good uh, presentation here for you that will hopefully give you some information around what workforce management is and, and ultimately if you kind of fit within the mold of, of, of needing some workforce management software. So as we cover what we're, we look at what we're going to go through today, the first thing is we're going to look at is what is workforce management itself? And then also going into the employee engagement side of it and, and the impact that that has, we'll talk about the right partner as well as some, some use cases within the contact center arena that we have seen from previous experiences before. So as we look at what is workforce management, so according to Brad Cleveland of the Incoming Call Management Institute, or ICMI, it's the art and science of having the right number of skilled people and supporting resources in place at the right time to handle an accurately forecasted workload at service level and with quality. So it, that's, it, it, it's, it's pretty much, again, when you, you look at this, it's, bal it's the balance of logic versus real world. And what I mean by that, the logic being getting your agents in the right place at the right time with the right skill set, but also how do you manage that customer service or that customer experience. And just recently, Gartner, a research analyst firm, uh, recently changed workforce optimization, which is uh, a, which workforce management sort of fits under that umbrella, to workforce engagement management. And so as you know, optimization really being more methodical in nature and getting processes and, and procedures put in place, uh, we, we found, they found that it was really kind of leaving out a key factor, which is the human side of it, the employee side of it, the customer side of it which is why they've changed that. So that's what we mean by balancing uh, logic versus real world or the art and science side of it. So when we look at managing the day-to-day -day activities, so let's kind of take a look from a workforce management perspective, uh, some of the stakeholders that we have in place. So you have your forecast and your schedule. Those people who are based around building those schedules, looking at the workforce planning or what-if analysis. So what if marketing decides to launch a new product or a new program at the end of the year? How would that have an impact on my call center? How would that impact my agents uh, that we have in place? Looking at it from a supervisor perspective, we see that uh, they're, they're managing more, again, those day-to-day -day tasks of making sure that, you're, you're, that their employees are in adherence or, or following the schedules that they put in place, whether that's being on calls, whether that's to be on emails, managing their time off and their preferences, as well as doing the, the, the performance metrics and reporting that surrounds it. Then we have our agents. And then from an agent perspective, again, they're, they're on the front line. They're answering the calls, making sure that they have access to their schedules, making sure that if an emergency happens within their, their personal life, that they can make different, make certain changes or, 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 change, or, or, or shift or, or make changes within uh, their schedule with some of their colleagues. And then from a management perspective, 
sort of really just managing the overall operational side of it, the total cost of ownership, making sure that the employees are learning, making sure that they have the proper skill sets and that the onboarding processes are as smooth and seamless as possible. And one thing I'm noticing here, Brandon, as uh, you go through this, it looks like uh, the exact same personas that we use in the uh, when we demonstrate the contact center software itself, uh, meaning that almost everybody has some kind of a hand in workforce management. Uh, it, it spans the entire customer service arena, which is you know very interesting. I think. Yeah, Not just the WFM manager. Absolutely, absolutely, and, and a lot with with workforce management as we look at. At, at where we are from just digital transformation, it, it's really impactful that when we talk about this and having access to a more unified front, it's not just being held within the contact center, but sharing that information across many different departments, many different organizations to have access to, to other knowledge holders or, or, or stakeholders within. So it's not just the contact center, but a, a much more broader approach, right? Absolutely. And so when we look at it now from a, a contact center perspective or a contact center manager, so we, we talked about the stakeholders, but let's kind of get into the, 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 the details of, of the contact center manager. They're, they're, they're responsible for many different, different responsibilities within the, the contact center in terms of managing their agents, and they're pulled in a lot of different directions. And so typically on any given day, they're managing uh, a, a forecast or, or, or making changes from a forecast perspective. They got... They've got a lot of bit, a lot of shrinkage in, in place. Uh, uh, looking at the customer satisfaction side of it, right? So this is this is really kind of just to provide some context on what they're handling and, and some basic principles around workforce management uh, uh, that, that our contact center managers are facing. So I don't want to read through every single one of them, but ultimately what we see is that there's a huge, huge uh, level of, of, of responsibility that's placed in their back that they have to that they have to look at that's ultimately having an impact on your customer experience as well as your, your employee satisfaction and your employee morale, right? So these are things that we always want to take uh, account for when we're looking at it from a contact center manager perspective. And so when we, when we look at it from, from just that perspective and we talk about what exactly is workforce management, so well, the biggest component within uh, work for, within workforce management, within the contact center, is managing or the cost of your staff. So as you can see from this screen here, that approximately 75% of your staff, uh, it, 75% of your labor is coming from your employee base, right? So when we look at that, that, that that's a huge com complexity that we, we, we typically see within the, the contact center. And so how do you manage that? How do you control those costs? Right, with, uh, and, and so also what we find is that when you are able to kind of rein in some of these expenditures, when you're managing, as I mentioned on the previous slide, when you're looking at the attrition side of things, or when you're looking at adherence uh, or overtime and, and overstaffing, those all have a major impact on your business. Right, so you can experience a quite a huge return on investment just by being able to properly schedule your employees and account for their whereabouts, making sure that they're they're talking to the right people, uh, or they're talking to your customers, and they're following that schedule that, we've, that you've put in place that will ultimately have a, a large impact on your service levels and your customer satisfaction and your, your, your overall revenue as well. So when we look at it from this perspective, so what we want to do is kind of give you a, a, a real-world example. So I would, I would imagine that a lot of people are, are typically using Excel. And on the left side of the screen, what we're seeing is, is it's sort of the, the trying to balance the, your schedule agents versus your forecast. Um, and so what we can see, there's a lot of complexity when it comes to trying to manage that from an Excel point of view. So we acknowledge that, that from an Excel point of view, it's, an ex it's excellent from a forecasting point of view when you're using it for spreadsheets because essentially it's about number crunching. Right, but one of the things that it's not necessarily accounting for is its ability to, to make changes in, in real time uh, or, or to actually do the, the scheduling itself, right? Because that's more of a pattern exercise. So on the right side, what you see is, is some, a workforce management software that's truly helping you optimize the way that you're scheduling and planning for your day. So you're able to better align your schedule. You're better to, to meet the call volumes that you have in place. 
uh, to ultimately control those costs. And you can see here having, which ultimately correlates into a, a better service uh, service level score. Brandon, what would you say the uh, breakdown is on when the use of Excel just becomes too difficult and uh, you see people flipping the switch to go to a more formal solution or a lightweight solution versus an enterprise solution? So like those three stages there, what, what are you seeing in the market right now? Yeah, so I, I think once you, I think it's really kind of a balance of once you hit a, a certain level of where it becomes too complex to manage, where if you're, you're growing and you have, say, more than 50 agents, for example, and you're starting to find that uh, you're, you're, you're constantly spending money uh, from overtime or you're trying to make the right balance in, in, in terms of really kind of understanding what's happening within your, 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 customer, your customer base, that's typically where we're, we're seeing sort of the balance kind of come into play where workforce management truly adds more value uh, within the market. And is the most value coming from uh, mapping just volumes of interactions, uh, or where is the most value coming from? Well, it comes from a, a lot of different areas. So it comes from uh, understanding your forecast, uh, your scheduling, your forecasting, but also your adherence, for example, right? So if you've got employees that are, are, are scheduled for um, uh, calls or emails, you want to make sure that that's exactly what they're, what they're handling. So you don't want them to be doing too much uh, at any given point in time. You really want to make sure that you have the proper balance in place, and that ultimately has an impact on your overall schedule. Okay. So we have a poll question now that we just kind of want to just to kind of get a feel for uh, where everyone is in the process uh, of workforce management. So Jenna, can you uh, pull that up? Yeah. So our audience participation, go ahead and vote if you um, have this answer in front of you. So we want to know, are you currently using a workforce management software? Um, let us know, yes, you're, you currently have WFM in place, uh, no you're currently using Excel or you have nothing at all, you're just here to learn about it. So go ahead and plug your answers in there and then we'll take a look at the results here in a minute. Uh, what do you think the results are going to be, Brandon? Uh, I, I'm betting that we'll probably see uh, more people using Excel. Uh, that, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm guessing we'll, we'll see the, the vast majority of responses coming from. Yeah, we did uh, some pre-polling betting amongst the presenters, and, and all three of us said uh, that we thought it would be the second answer. But in, in previewing some of the polling results, I don't know that we're absolutely right on that. Yeah, so <laughs> let's go ahead and close the poll now and take a look at the results. Um, like, like Scott was saying, we were a little off in our predictions. It looks like the majority of people... Um, don't have WFM in place at all. They're just here to learn about the solution and what's out there. And um, the next option, I guess we're tied for, yes, we have um, software in place or using Excel. So let's uh, yeah. I think we definitely lost that one. Yeah. yeah. Good thing we actually didn't put money on it. We were debating on it. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and jump back into the presentation. All right. So the, the next side of it, what we want to kind of cover with you guys is the employee engagement side of it. And, and that's really where we uh, are starting to see more of the value come in, as I referenced earlier, just with regard, with regard to Gartner itself and, the, and, and giving more autonomy and more empowerment to your, your employees. When we think about it, so we, we know that a, we see that we're, the transition of, of baby boomers are, are starting to leave the workforce, and we have more millennials coming in on a day-to-day -day basis, or, or, or starting to become the, the, the dominant uh, uh, workforce. And so we know that they're really into real-time information, but more importantly, what they're looking for in their work experience is something that mirrors their their, their personal life. Right? So they want access to their schedules in real time. They, they don't want to have to be in the office just to see their schedule. So having things like a, a web portal, being able to communicate with their, their counterparts to see if uh, there's some misalignment in their schedule or they need to, to swap their shifts, that's something that they're, they're going to want to do in real time. And I think when we talk about the em empowerment side of it, those are the types of things that we want to ensure that we're delivering to our employees. Uh, another factor is the, the contact center manager, and I think a lot of times 
what I found is that when we talk about agents, we often kind of leave out the contact center manager. And if it's not on purpose and it's not necessarily saying that they're not 100% accounted for, but we typically talk about the agents that are handling the calls. But what about, as I mentioned earlier, some of those, those, those pain points that the contact center manager has to go through in terms of the attrition and making sure that their employees are adhering to their schedule. So having something like a web portal where employees have more power to shift or, or trade their schedules between each other is, is a huge uh, relief on the contact center manager themselves because they don't have to go in and improve everything manually. Not to say that they can't or that they shouldn't, I mean, there's always parameters that you could put around in place if you feel that it will have an impact on your service level, but ultimately it, it, it sort of gives more empowerment to both the, 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 the contact center manager to focus on the day-to-day -day operations of things that they're responsible for, as well as giving the employees time to have a better work-life balance to, to, to have more, more control over their, their performance, or excuse me, their, their, their schedules, ultimately driving a, a greater sense of performance and feedback. Yeah, an extreme example of this, I was at a small conference maybe a year and a half ago or so now, and there was a large airline call center director there, and she was saying that they take this methodology of letting the employees manage their workforce to, to a whole new level to where they say, here's how many hours that you are assigned to work today, here are the open shifts, uh, she has a predetermined set of you know where people and how they should be assigned, but then after that, it's up to the employees to manage in up to 15-minute blocks. So she said that they were up to and sometimes over 1,500 shift swaps per week uh, within their workforce, and you, you get notifications. I talk to one of the agents. You get a pop-up to know when different shifts are available, you can pick those up, you can drop some off and offer them to the rest of the team. And so say you need to, you want to go and take an extra lunch break, you have time, you can, you can schedule that uh, accordingly, really taking uh, things to the next level as far as giving that work-life flexibility uh, as long as you're putting in your hours and all the shifts are covered, uh, which she says almost always happens, then uh, they're all good. Uh, though on this group, uh, where we <laughs> thought people would be using uh, some kind of, uh, some form of WFM, even if it's manual through Excel, uh, you can start using Excel, or if you have a contact center platform, one of the things that you can do is see if there's a solution within the software you're using today to actually facilitate your call interactions uh, to manage your schedule. So uh, this is just an example that we have from Enchos Interactive's uh, contact center solution where you can, it's called Workforce Scheduler, and you can actually do similar type activities from the agent and supervisor's privileges, depending on how you want to set it, where you just drag and drop people's names over certain time blocks, set your hourly parameters on your business hours, or if you have follow the sun type service, you can uh, manage to that as well. And because it's built off of the uh, contact center software platform, then you can go ahead and just uh, use your calling metrics to uh, make sure you're hitting the volumes. As, as you saw in Brandon's graph earlier where they, their alignment was a bit off, this does the same thing with uh, color coding your time frames where uh, you may have higher call volumes and you need to make sure they get covered. So uh, there are several routes to go from... Uh, Excel to uh, a lightweight solution that might be embedded or just a, an add-on module to what you're already using or using more of a full-blown solution if you have uh, an enterprise-level contact center. Thanks, Scott. And, and so the, the next side of it, when we looking at it from the employee engagement side of it, is gamification. Now, I'm not sure how many people are, are, are really familiar with gamification or you, maybe you've heard the terminology, but not quite, you don't quite understand what exactly gamification is or really how it even makes sense within the context or within the business realm. So let's kind of take a, a brief look at that because that's another thing that we're seeing when we talk about the employee engagement and the employee empowerment side of it. So when we look at gamification itself and then we kind of break it down, uh, there, there's a couple things. First, it's the use of, of game elements and a game design. Uh, you're taking that and you're applying that in a non-game context. 
right? The other side of it is it's, it's designed to be extremely interactive, where the goal is to, to provide more engagement uh, and, and, and ultimately create more fun within your, 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 your business, whether it's for your customers, your employees, and your partners. And, and, and again, you're gamifying your business. So ultimately, uh, many of you think back to just a few years ago when social media was really kind of becoming dominant in terms of how do you engage that within your, your business practice. I remember talking to a few customers and they said, yes, 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 you know, I, I do social media. Well, you don't do social media and, and gamification is really sort of the same, same thing. You don't do gamification. It's something that's extremely uh, strategic in nature. It's something that takes a lot of thought uh, behind it because it's not just about awarding badges or stars or something like that. It's really much more detailed to where you're really kind of getting behind the behavioral side of what makes your employees tick and what's sort of driving them to perform. And, and, and keep in mind, gamification is nothing that's really new, even from just a game perspective. We've been doing – gamification has been a part of our lives in, in, in many different – facets, whether it's it's keeping track of, of, of who's got who's the greatest quarterback, who has the most Super Bowls, if you're if you play fantasy football, who's winning, and then the uh, and, and the banter that kind of goes back and forth within it. It's just taking those environments and putting it into a business context. And so again, this is really about when we look at the workforce of millennials, this is really about taking their personal life again and then and mirroring that within the workforce. So let's talk about some of those actual values that you're getting. So one, again, as I mentioned, there's the empowerment. So millennials, as we know, want more, uh, or they want real-time feedback, right? This is something that they're, they've, they're, they're used to getting something that, that is extremely important to them. So ultimately, when they're getting that real-time feedback, when they're able to make changes on the fly to their schedule or see how their, their counterparts or their, their colleagues are doing, we're starting to speak their language, right? We're starting to, 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 to give a, a better balance between work and, and, and personal life, and it, and it becomes extremely uh, exciting for them. You see the in, in increased productivity in the sense that, again, they're having those conversations that maybe they would not have had beforehand. And you're, a, they're also able, you're also able to identify what's making them tick, and we'll kind of get into that uh, in the next slide in terms of saying where they're strong, where they're weak, and how they want to perform against their friends. And ultimately what you're going to be doing is driving, it's going to be brand amplification, meaning your customers, I mean, your, 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 your employees are happy, and if they're happy, it, it's very much like Richard Branson says, if you take care of your employees, they're going to take care of your customers. And that's what we kind of see from a brand amplification point of view, where your employees are happy, they're happy to come in, they're being challenged, they're being tasked with something that they find exciting, and ultimately that has an impact on your customers. And then, again, as I mentioned, the behavioral side of it. So you're able to drive the friendly competition just like you would be uh, if you were in, in fantasy football or if you were uh, 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 keeping track of, of, of who, uh, who's going to the Super Bowl or what have you. These are things that just creates that fun environment that makes it really exciting for them to come in day to day uh, to their work environment. Yeah, and there's, again, just like the scheduler, there's a few different ways you can go about it. You can use the dashboard or, or a live uh, reader board that you use for contact center metrics and uh, hold team or individual or queue type uh, games per shift or per day or per week. Uh, just using your own metric and you know saying here's the goal for today and, and everyone watches the dashboard. Uh, you can even pull in with our dashboard or snapshot dashboard. You can uh, actually pull in third-party integration like your CRM data if you want to track sales or something along those lines. Um, but there's also more robust solutions if you have an initiative for this upcoming year to provide full-blown gamification environment. Uh, so do you, is it something that you're trying to make as a part of the culture and, and have badges and those types of things. And Brandon has uh, an example of that here on the next slide. Right. And, and so, again, when, when we look at this, when you look at this slide, just at, 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 at the surface level, you see icons or badges. And, and, again, like I was saying, it's so much more than that. However, we do look at this as, as the leadership board, right? So where John and, or Stephen can see uh, how, they, how they're doing against their, their counterparts. And they can see, okay, John overall is leaving with, leading with 16 gold stars, silvers, and bronze. So what do I need to do to improve that? So again, not just 
having a leadership board because it's more than that, you want to give them a little bit more to, to rely on. So if we look at this, this build out here, you, have, you can see that they have access to their schedule and then they can use that access to their schedule and also compare that to where they are from a, their performance uh, level, right? So we can see uh, that you know, this is John from an adherence point of view, he's performing pretty well, um, but there's, there's still more room for him to, to, to grow or for better areas for him to improve upon. Right, so then if you take it another level down, we can also see that, okay, John can look at his schedule and say, okay, from an adherence point of view, I've been in adherence 61.2% of today. And I know that in order to get my next gold star or, or gold badge, that I need to be at 65 or 70% or whatever the, the performance metric is that you have in place. And I can see that I've got two hours to, 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 to improve that. Right? So these are things where they can kind of compete against themselves, where we're not, they're not waiting for a, a performance review to see how they're doing. So this is something that they can kind of use this as their own self-motivating factor within a, a gamified-based environment. And so that's really what we want to communicate, right? It's just kind of showing that it's not just the, the stars, but giving them access to the information, giving them the ability to make the changes themselves. To, to sort of drive themselves and then use their counterparts as another motivating factor to continue to enhance and then grow and develop within their career. Yeah, and this doesn't have anything to do uh, with any of the solutions that we have to offer, but in talking to a lot of contact centers uh, and with all the, a lot of the more millennial type folks jumping into these roles, uh, I'd also advise you to be creative and look into how you're rewarding for uh, the contests that you're gamifying or the metrics that you're gamifying. Uh, for instance, there is a large over 2,000 seed contact center in the city I'm in, and uh, I did a tour of their facility uh, a little while back, and they actually said they thought they made a big deal about or, or a big momentum shift to where they could say, you control your 401k match up to, I think it was 10%, and every quarter that you win, you get an extra point in matching 401k. The C-suites thought that that was the most amazing thing ever. That was great. But uh, it was actually, when they implemented that, the lowest performing quarter they've ever had. And so they brought in a few uh, of the agents and said, why? And they're like, well, we don't care about that. Uh, and so they said, well, what are your ideas? And I kid you not, the next quarter, they used one of the guy's ideas just to see how crazy they could get to make sure that, or just to take one of their ideas and not, you know, think that the advice was all for naught, they said dump $10,000 from a helicopter over a pool and have the three top leaders of the quarter jump in the pool and get money. And <laughs> that is exactly what they did. And they said it was the highest performing quarter they've ever had. It was a, a sales organization, a sales, outbound sales uh, contact center. And so I don't know that everyone is going to go out and do that. And uh, if you do, let me know. I'll come out and watch because that sounds hilarious. But uh, you know, be creative and, and tailor your rewards to uh, the employee base that you have. I just want to add that funny uh, yep. anecdote there. Good point. And so now what, what, what I want to kind of do is just, just kind of bring this back to reality a little bit, right? So we kind of introduced workforce management. We talked to you about the employee engagement side of it. So ultimately, what does this mean for you? Right, so what we're going to see is you're going to see an improvement in your overall operational efficiency and, 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 and lower cost. Lower cost being having not so much fighting against an Excel spreadsheet to try to figure out your forecast itself. So once you are able to rein that in, you can start to experience quite a bit of savings uh, uh, just in, in terms of your labor costs alone. And that's ultimately going to improve uh, from a customer experience as well as just your, your brand rep reputation. And then you're going to have a higher employee engagement and, and reduced attrition, right? So I think a, 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 a recent report that came out from Contact Babel said that in 2015, age attrition was somewhere around 22%. So just imagine the cost that's associated with that. So being able to, to, to rein that in and, and have a steady flow of employees who understand your customer base and understand everything that you're going through is going to have a huge impact on your overall business. And so when we look at this slide right here around workforce management, we, this is just really kind of, kind of bring it up, bringing it all together from a WFM perspective, having a, a unified best-in-class contact center that can really kind of scale with your business. So depending on, regardless of what size you are, 
Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, if, if you've got about 50 employees, so that's really where we kind of start to see the, the overall ROI around that. Um, again, being able to deliver the most comprehensive and feasible schedules, and then again, giving your agents the ability to uh, be extremely productive through things like gamification, through automated self services, the web portals are going to be extreme are, are going to be key for you uh, when you kind of think about a workforce management solution. Given that the majority of you are are kind of here just to learn a little bit more about it. So one of the things that we want to do, and I'm not going to read these directly, but these are just some of the, 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 the results that we've seen from, uh, from our workforce management. Right? So we've seen in improvements in customer satisfaction by a, a, a bank with 200 agents. Uh, we've seen in increased schedule adherence by large enterprise just so after a few months of implementing it. Right? So that's another way of having a, having a better understanding of, of your average handle time or how long you're on the call and then you know, being able to rein in some of your costs that way, becoming more efficient or decreased attrition by 15% by a contact center with 100 agents, right? So this is just something that we just kind of wanted to show you that there are tangible results. There is a ROI that's associated with this that you can typically experience after a, a, you know, six, six months to a year. And so another thing that I wanted to, to, to figure out is, is, is workforce management for you. Right, and it, does it make sense? Do you need it? And so we've kind of talked about these things, but here are just some of the, the some some other examples of where you can kind of identify if this makes sense for you. So uh, if you've got one or two strategic planners, or and you've got a few contact center managers, uh, you they're using complicated spreadsheets. And again, I, I think that uh, as you're here to learn, you're probably somewhere uh, getting close to to to, to this. So complicated formulas, and, and one of the things that you'll find, as, as I mentioned earlier, it, it, it's okay for forecasting, it's a mathematical tool, but it's extremely prone to have quite a bit of errors, right? And, and the person that you have controlling that, what happens if they, if they, they leave the company uh, or, or some other factor of, of or errors of finding that in Excel? And then you also, again, if you have 50 to 150 more agents, then you're going to typically experience an ROI. And if you've got low morale or a high turnover, you've got a lot of millennial agents coming in your workforce, these are things that will, again, as we kind of talked about employee engagement, will be a, a key factor for you guys and just in terms of understanding the broader need of workforce management and if it makes sense for you. So one of the things that I, I wanted to, that we wanted to do is we didn't want to just talk to you for a full hour and walk you through uh, quite a few slides. Uh, one of the things we want to do, we want to kind of show you what this actually looks like. So we've got Dave Holkstra from uh, with us, and he's our, our, our senior sales engineer, and he's going to give you guys a demo of what that employee engagement looks like, and so you can kind of see it in real time to get a better understanding, and, and, and hopefully this will provide much more context and insight as to what we've been trying, or what we were, we're talking about here today. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Dave. Hi everybody. Uh, so yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to uh, give you guys a quick overview. What we're really going to do here is give you guys a really good. Um, I want to give you an overview of kind of how we how how we put all the bu building blocks together. So you know we've talked a lot of things about employee engagement, about the ability to to understand how things impact your contact center. Um, so how do we put all those pieces into a workflow that help us uh, truly understand? So they're coming at this from a lot of different aspects. One of the key elements to creating and maintaining an effective workforce planning solution is forecasting appropriately. So in the tool here, we're going to be able to take a look at our historical volumes. Um, where our calls are coming from and how they're arriving. And so we, we look at different things like how do our calls arrive month to month, right? Uh, so you can see here that the, the software is already doing all the work for us. It's showing us the pattern, the seasonality of where calls show up on a month to month basis or a week to week basis within the month. You know, we're busier in the first week, in the fourth week of the month as opposed to the first week. Um, how do our calls arrive? on a day-to-day -day pattern, Mondays versus Fridays. All that work that you know, quite a few of you are probably doing in Excel right now, um, we're, we're, we're streamlining this process. We even look at things like how do the calls arrive on a time of day basis within the day of the week. So you're looking at a Friday arrival pattern here. How do my calls show up on a Friday versus a Monday? 
right? All this information is leading us to be able, be able to create a predictive model of how our calls are going to arrive based on time of day. So here we're actually looking at the end result of a forecast that tells us, you know, it shows us the, the different patterns that show up through our days here. So if I go to different days, you know, you're going to be able to see different patterns changing and emerging throughout the, throughout the day as you would expect in a call center environment. But not only that, but the ability for us to plug in some of the targets that we need. Things like what are our service level targets for this agent? Um, what are our occupancy targets for this group of agents? So, or how busy do we want them to be? Um, you know, targets like that that ultimately lead us to this very bottom line you'll see here where it actually shows us how many people we need staffed at every single point of the day. So it's telling me between noon and 12.15 on the 22nd, I need 9.8 people on the phones to make sure I hit my goals, right? So this is a really difficult number to come across um, manually. And so we've, we've, we've kind of perfected the art here of determining this. So the key now is to take this data and we want to create a schedule over it. So when I go into my scheduling screen, you're going to see that not only do I get the information about what my schedules actually are, and you can see I don't have any schedules here yet, but I also get information as to how the day is going to shape up. So you see the purple bar here tells me the number of agents that I actually need, and the red line shows me the number of agents I actually have. So it doesn't take a lot of analysis to understand that we're relatively understaffed throughout the entire day. And that information is represented here in the data. So the data here tells me how many agents I need and how many agents I have, and then tells me the, the difference between my staffing. So anywhere you see yellow, that's an area of uh, understaffing that could present a concern. So what we want to do is now build schedules on top of this demand so that we can create the most efficient schedules. Because keep in mind, the two worst things that can happen in a call center are agents waiting for customers and customers waiting for agents. If you have agents waiting for customers, that means you're paying somebody to sit there and not do anything, which is not always the worst thing, but if over time that adds up to quite a bit of payroll going out the door for not getting any return. In the other situation, you have customers that aren't receiving the service quality that they expect from, from your organization. So our job is to optimize those two requirements amongst one another. And we can do that by telling the system to create a schedule based on the agents and their individual parameters. So the system knows all the different pieces of information that comprise a schedule for the agent. So that when we go in and we actually look at a particular day, and we, we are able to now determine how well that particular day shaped up across, uh, across the agent. And this is one of the hardest things for agencies that don't have workforce management, is show me what happens if I do something. If I go in and look at an agent schedule and change their, their break time from this time to this time, does that help me? Does that hurt me? And that's what the system does. So if I go in and I make a minor change to some schedule, say here at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I move them to 9 o'clock, notice the system is now telling me that I am critically understaffed here between 8 and 8.30 in the morning. And so this is the overall idea in every single situation across the board is show me where the problem areas are. The other big problem that most call centers have that don't have a good, a robust workforce management system is um, we tend to be very reactive instead of proactive, right? We look up and we notice that there are 20 calls in queue and we try to fix it then, but it's usually too late at that point. If I can solve these types of problems in advance by seeing this information the day before or the week before, I now have the ability to clean up and take care of these issues so that we don't have those problems happen. And, and that usually leads to happier agents and happier customers. You know, for situations where people call in sick or we have schedule changes or someone walks up to me and says, can I have Friday off? I can go into the system and actually see how that day is going to shape up if that agent takes that day off. And this is the critical element of workforce management, is being able to actually answer the question, if this happens, what's going to happen? So we can even do things like manipulate forecasts 
So we can go into a forecast and say, what if my talk time went up by 60 seconds over the course of the day? How does that hurt or help my staffing? Most likely it hurts it, but those answers are now much easier to arrive at. So not only do we have, uh, we, not only do we have the, uh, th this information available to schedulers, to team leads, to supervisors, but we also give information to the agents. So the, in, what happens is, is that the, uh, the, the agent is now needing some sort of way to receive this information on a day-to-day -day basis. So we provide each agent with an, a portal that allows them to see things like, what is my schedule? Where are my breaks? Where are my lunches? What are we going to do uh, between that time and this time? And what am I doing throughout the day? So this agent has an email uh, block on their calendar where they're going to be working email for the morning. We also give tools to the agents for things like uh, vacation management. So if you see this row of dots here, this is actually a notification to the agent that um, how good of a chance they have of getting the day off approved. So a red dot means the day is full or it's been blocked off. A green dot means go ahead, ask for that day off. You're, you're more likely to get that request uh, taken care of. So not only do we give the agent tools, but we give the, the, the supervisors and the schedulers tools to be able to say, um, I want to analyze this request, and can we afford to give this person the day off, and who has the day off, and making sure that information all gets updated in the system instead of just using emails to try and figure everything out. So not only are we, are we giving you tools to help you predict and manage, uh, but we're also giving you tools that help to decrease the amount of time it takes to uh, complete normal everyday tasks. For example, shift trades. If we want to tr have our agents trade schedules amongst one another, we give them a, a mechanism to be able to do that. We have um, s schedule preference tools in here as well, even the ability for the agents to see things like what their statistics are for the day. So we give the agent a dashboard of information that says, here's how many calls you took for the day, uh, here's what your handle times are, and here's what your schedule adherence was for the day. So the agent doesn't necessarily uh, spend all day in the dark wondering where they are, or they don't have to go up to a supervisor and ask every five minutes, you know, how am I looking, how am I looking. They can get that information themselves. So there's a number of different, uh, a number of different tools here for the agents, even including the gamification piece that Brandon referenced a little bit earlier. So being able to uh, track the, uh, the information that, uh, of, of, against my KPI so that I know what I'm doing, and seeing how I rank my, amongst my peers so that I can continue to work harder. As we all know, um, more productive agents usually leads to you needing the uh, fewer number of agents to handle the same, num same amount of volume. So anything we can do to push this, uh, this efficiency and productivity model towards the agents um, is going to be a benefit uh, to your call center. Um, Lastly, you know, as we progress through, we, we, we haven't forgotten about uh, maybe the, the, the other tier of users within the system, um, and that is the, uh, the, the supervisor or the team lead. Maybe somebody who's responsible for uh, working with a group of agents, but doesn't necessarily um, need to do full scheduling. Uh, you know, we have web-based tools that allow the, the, the supervisor to go in and see what their team schedules are and even perform basic uh, schedule modifications. Things like if, a, if an agent calls and says, I'm going to be out sick, I can go in and directly add an absence to their schedule. Pick the reason why, click apply, and now the agent is out sick. I don't have to email anybody. I don't have to notify anybody. We also give access to real-time adherence. So real-time adherence is the ability for us to see what our agents are doing, which you probably currently have the ability to do. You can see what your agents are doing, what state they're in, what they're what they're trying to accomplish from uh, minute to minute. Um, but the uh, what you're probably missing if you don't have WFM is the ability to see what they're scheduled to be doing at that particular moment. So if I'm a, if I'm an agent and I'm supposed to be on the phone, but I'm taking my lunch, the system is going to notify anyone looking at this dashboard what that that agent is out of adherence. So 
it gives you a real-time decision-making dashboard that helps you make these uh, these critical decisions throughout the day that help you in real time figure out where everybody is and what's going on. Some call centers are very particular about this. They, they watch it very closely, and others just use it as a general guideline. It really is up to you on how you want to use it. Um, we also give tools for uh, monitoring throughout the day. So we can show a, a supervisor things like, how many calls have we taken today? How, what do our stats look like? What's our handle time? And how do we compare that to our forecasted handle time? Are we doing well? Are we doing poorly? Go to the performance tab here, and we can see things like, you know, what is our service level for the day? What is our abandon rate for the day, our average speed of answer? And, and I can get detail on any interval throughout the day. Um, so what we found here is that the more information you give to your teams, the usually the better informed the decisions are. You know, if an agent comes up to me as a supervisor and says, um, can I go work in another department, um, I can look at this and say, no, our service level today is terrible, It's you, we need you on the phones. And, and that kind of information becomes pervasive throughout the system. So it doesn't matter whether you're the type of whether whether your role is the person who's responsible for putting together these long-term forecasts that help me determine how many people we need on in 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 different areas, or if you're the person that's creating the schedules, whether it, in very short term or very long term, being able to understand what agents can work and when they can work, or if you're the supervisor that's uh, responsible for just making sure your agents stay on task and on focus. We give a number of different tools that help really understand how we do that. And so it, the very core of workforce management is at very simply, let's make sure we're spending our payroll dollars appropriately. If we are spending our payroll dollars appropriately, we're going to be answering the calls in the, in the manner that we should and making sure to take care of the, uh, the various different ways that we can handle our customers. And this doesn't necessarily have to be on the phones. It can be chats, it can be emails, it can be back office work. Anything that can be counted really can, can have a workforce management application. So that at the end of the day, you're giving your team or yourself the ability to go in and say, we have a problem between 8 and 8.30. What can I do about it? Well, what if I move this person to 8.30? And now we've solved, we, we've at least made a dent in that information, and we're able to pr progress towards making a, uh, an informed and uh, proper decision. So hopefully this is uh, what you guys were hoping to get out of this. Um, I know that uh, we, we have a bit of time uh, left over at the end here for some Q&A. So I'm going to turn it back over to Brandon here and let Brandon kind of wrap us up and then uh, facilitate the, the question and answer period. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. So. Uh, guys, yeah, so uh, as Dave mentioned, again, hopefully this is something that you guys have, have learned a lot and, and gained a lot of value from. Uh, so, so with that, let's, let's open it up for some, some questions if we have any and, and, and go from there. Uh, and, and just as a follow-up, in, in the event that we do run out of time, you, you can contact myself or, or Scott. Uh, we've got our email addresses here, as you can see, and, and if we don't have enough, enough time, we'll be sure to follow up. Great. Thanks, Brandon. We do have a couple questions that came in. Um, just a reminder to the attendees, you can go ahead and submit questions still. And as Brandon mentioned, if we don't get the, to them on the broadcast, we'll go ahead and follow up with you via email. Uh, so this, the first question I have is about the integration between the workforce management system and the rest of the contact center. Will the agents get alerts um, to let them know that they need to go on break or come back from a break so that they can uh, stay in adherence for their schedule, or is that up to the supervisors to manage? The agents will still be able to receive uh, pop-up alerts and reminders, so you can get an alert five minutes before they're supposed to go to break. Um, the system also does uh, proactive notifications as well. So, for example, if I go in and I change someone's break uh, in the afternoon from 3.30 to 3.45, the system will proactively let them know either through uh, the web portal, through an email, or potentially even an SMS text message that uh, their schedule 
schedule has changed so that they can uh, they can check and make sure. So we're in the we're in the interest of keeping the agent as informed as possible as uh, to their uh, schedule. So that's a great question, but definitely they do receive information as that as those things change throughout the day. Great, thanks. And a little bit of a follow up on that: um, How does the integration take place? Is that through SQL or another? Yes, in most cases, uh, just to get a little techie on you, it is a SQL ODBC connection that uh, pulls the information. Uh, there's there's usually two two ways we connect in. There's a real time integration which shows me the state by state information for the agents, and then there's a historical integration that usually every 15 minutes goes and grabs the information out of the phone system so that we have a historical record of how many calls were taken, how long those calls took, who took those calls, things like that, that provide us the necessary data. Okay, great. Um, and then another question about um, a third-party contact center wants to know if the system is able to divide up by department and teams and clients, um, if there's some overlap in those or if everyone needs to be separate. Absolutely. So there's there's kind of two different ways you can approach that question. Number one is how do the calls get separated? Um, the calls typically get separated by however the calls are separated in the phone system, right? Usually this is by skill or by queue, and then you can take those skills or queues and group them into either departments or um, you know groupings, depending on how your your call center likes to see that information. Now the other the other uh, application of that type of question is users, right? I have people who uh, work in one department. I don't want them seeing other departments. Um, so we can very easily set up uh, permissions uh, as to what data can or cannot be seen. So you could have two completely separate groups that never even know the other ones exist, or you can cross-pollinate between those two, depending on whatever you need. So it's very easy to set those different permissions and rules up so that individual departments are all handled differently. For example, you might have two different groups of agents in your call center that have different vacation rules. You can very easily create two different sets of vacation rules and apply them to the different people so that there's not there's never a question of I have to apply one set of rules to every agent within the system. So it's very uh, it's very modular in that sense so that we can uh, we can do a lot of different things with departments and rules. All right, great. So it looks like that's all the questions that I have for right now. So if no one else has anything else, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Actually, we just got one that popped up, so don't log off yet. <laughs> Gamification, <laughs> can that be used for shift bidding? It can in a sense. So that's a great question. Um, in a sense, you can use the gamification to help you rank and score your agents. Um, in, in our particular system, it's not an automatic. Um, it still is requires um, a bit of work um, on the other end. But you can use the gamification to um, rank and score your agents and then use that information to help them work through things like bidding for shifts or granting preferences or who gets the better shift, those kind of things. So absolutely, and that's really the whole point of gamification is incentivizing our agents to work towards a goal that helps our call center become more productive and efficient. And usually, based on my experience, agents are most incentivized uh, towards their schedule. And so that's a key component of the workforce management system is being able to award rank um, towards scheduling the different pieces and gamification plays a big role in that. Perfect. Um, another question about the integration. Can that the data integration be pointed to a custom SQL table? Uh, so the, the that's a good question, and it yes, it technically can. Um, so integrations are usually really the the, the whole point is we're trying to uh, we're, we're getting two databases to talk to each other. Um, so it doesn't matter where that data is coming from, as long as the data is aggregated in such a way that we can access it. So, for example, I'm you know I'm not sure the genesis of the question, but I'm making some assumptions here that maybe there are. Um, there's a back office application where someone is keeping track of uh, of of 
receive data in a SQL application or something like that. Absolutely, that's really all we're doing is connecting two databases together. So uh, whether it's a custom SQL or part of the phone system or part of a chat system or an email system or any other system, as long as that information is appropriated in the proper interval format, we can we can attach to a, a, a different SQL. So it's really just a question of can we make these two databases talk to each other. Okay, um, let me see if I can understand this question real quick, or I'll just read it to you verbatim. What if scenarios to preview schedules and forecast prior to publishing? Do you have yep. this? Okay. Yep, absolutely. So the system allows you to create as many what-if scenarios as you like that you can uh, you can do both in forecasting and scheduling. Um, you can even use those what-if uh, scenarios to report. So, for example, you could create a what-if forecast. What if my handle time went up by 30% over the next year? Um, and then you could create a what-if set of schedules on top of that and instantly be able to find out where you're deficient in something like that. So absolutely, what if scenarios are a big part of, uh, of the software and that's something that uh, you can create as many of those as you want. Perfect, thanks so much for your time, Brandon. And thanks Scott and Dave also for jumping on and helping us learn more about uh, workforce management and the tools that are available. As we mentioned before, the webinar recording and slides will be sent to all registrants. Um, we'll go ahead and send those out in the days following at the webinar and thanks again for joining us and we have you hope you have the rest of a great day hey thanks Jenna thanks everyone for joining thank you bye